So we start today with Apple VR. Let's dive in. So what exactly is this headset going to be like, according to reputable sources that have access to confidential company materials? There are rumors that Apple is currently developing two distinct virtual reality and augmented reality devices. According to a trusted Apple analyst, the so-called Apple Glasses, which are an augmented reality AR-only device, won't be released until at least 2024. No! God, please, no! 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 However, a so-called mixed reality headset that is configured to offer both virtual reality, VR, and augmented reality, AR, functionality could be in the shops as early as 2023. Can't wait for that, huh? Ming-Chi Kuo claims this headset, which users might anticipate looking like a more streamlined version of Facebook's Oculus Quest device, will include a total of no less than 15 cameras. It has been reported that another six of those cameras will serve as innovative biometric system that will monitor eye movements and expressions. And the final camera will apparently scan the immediate environment around the head, although details on this are, of course, still unknown. Eight of those cameras will be used to offer an image transmissive AR experience by capturing surroundings in nuanced depth. Shaky statements made by the analyst Quo, his information is based on supply chain movements that he has identified by looking into the activities of longtime Apple supplier Lagan, a company that will likely be integral to the final manufacture of the device in terms of screens. His information was obtained by looking into the activities of Lagan. This revolutionary suite of sensors and screens will draw processing horsepower from a newly developed chip that is said to pack even more oomph than Apple's celebrated M1, shipped in the 2020 generation of Mac computers. Nice. Apple does not play any games when they bring their A game. Next up, PlayStation VR 2. There's a lot of competitors moving into the space of VR. Some are doing a great job in moving into this competitive and expensive market, and others, not so well. Thankfully, the PlayStation VR 2 seems like a new foray into the virtual reality world with high-quality visual fidelity and excellent ergonomics. As with all new pieces of hardware, the question now is whether or not there will be enough games to make the investment worthwhile. First-party games like Horizon, Call of the Mountain Station certainly help us overcome those fears. And while nothing has been announced yet, I would be shocked if the outstanding Half-Life didn't also make its way to the platform. The other key question is whether or not the platform will support motion controls. PSVR 2 shows a lot of potential. In our opinion, we really support anything having to do with PlayStation, as they have clearly been the juggernaut in anything gaming. Can't wait to see what they're coming up with next. And in addition to this VR headset, we are sure they're going to rock the show. Up next, this would be the Pico 4, the latest and greatest in terms of price and performance. You might be on the fence when it comes to purchasing this headset, and for good reason. The Quest 2 already has an established market dominance, and the Quest 3 could be just around the corner. However, thanks to a handful of leaks and hands-on experience with the Pico 4, we have enough information to answer the question of whether or not you should purchase the Pico 4. Now that Meta Connect is over, we are aware that the majority of consumers cannot afford the MetaQuest Pro. Consequently, the majority of consumers have shifted their focus to the Pico 4, and with good reason. The Pico is more affordable than the Quest, and in some ways, it is more advanced than the Quest 2. <laughs> to begin, let's talk about what aspects of Quest 3 will be different for you in comparison to Quest 2 and what we know about Quest 3. It is a 2D pen pass-through, so there is no depth to the image, which sounds strange but is not much of a big deal. The first thing we noticed was the color pass-through. It is significantly better than any pass-through on the Quest 2 and you can even enable some augmented reality features with games like Fruit Ninja. This just makes keeping the headset on that much easier. That being said, you can enable some augmented reality features with games like Fruit Ninja. The pass-through offered by the Quest Pro utilizes a full-color camera to recreate, in all practical terms, your playing area in order to provide the impression of a 3D image. 
My sincere view, based on my experience with both the Quest Pro and the Pico, is that the pass-through quality of the Pico is on par with that of the Quest Pro, and in some respects, it is even somewhat superior because the clarity appears to be slightly higher on the Pico. Oh my god! Wow! The leaked specifications of the Quest 3 also confirm that this will be the same for that device as well. As a result, the difference between the Quest 3 and the Pico could be 3D pass-through, which will allow for more complex augmented reality experiences. And let's be honest, we like things to be realistic. This appears to be the direction that Metaris is going with their new headsets. The next thing is something that I don't understand why all VR headsets aren't doing yet, and that is proper weight control. The fact that the battery is located at the back of the Pico makes it seem incredibly balanced on your head. In fact, it almost seems as if it isn't there. This is due to the fact that the battery is substantially larger than the battery found in the Quest 2. It is approximately 40% larger. It does feel like there is a little bit of uneven pressure on the front of your face, but that is because of the way the straps are made to pull onto your face. Due to the fact that the weight distribution is so good, it is probable that this would also be more appropriate for a younger audience. Now regrettably, according to a leaked CAD files of the Quest 3, they're still adhering to this front heavy design, so the Pico clearly comes out on top. In that aspect, form factor of the Pico is also quite sleek. The Quest 2 is very front heavy. <laughs> and can cause neck troubles. The gorgeous appearance of the headset can be attributed to the pancake lenses, which have a lower profile and are therefore more comfortable to wear than the Fresno lenses seen on the Quest 2. All in all, this is a great comp for the Quest 2. But the Quest 3 Pro is a different animal. Have a peek at this clip that Mark Zuckerberg hinted at using mixed reality for fencing on the Quest Pro. Despite the fact that they claim Quest Pro is not intended to be used as a gaming device, the company's marketing director teases a game on the device that leads up to the Kinect event. This may seem like an odd marketing strategy, but we are okay with it because it demonstrates that you actually can use this for gaming-related activities, which is something we already knew. In fact, this is one of the features I'm most looking forward to with Quest Pro, along with a lighter headset and so many upgraded specs that are on the hush. I can't wait to see how they're going to make use of this device and how different games are going to be on it so that people can really have fun times. Utilizing the natural lighting of the outdoors with the color pass-through cameras, this is really going to change the metaverse world. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like button for us, ring that bell, and don't forget to subscribe. Farjo Aero is exceptional for those people who can appreciate a good-looking piece of hardware, and this one definitely checks that box for us. It's just a pretty headset. However, beyond that, this is the best head strap ever used on a headset. It has four different ways to adjust it, so you can find the perfect fit for your head. It has a back dial for overall tightness, the forehead dial to secure it to the top of your head, and two side dials that further lock the headset in place. When this headset is properly adjusted, it feels solidly locked to your head. There's very little to no shake. Even if you're moving around like crazy, the XR3 does use the same head strap, and it's fully sprintable if that matters much to you. On weight, the XR3 and VR3 are two really heavy headsets. Compared to the Index, which has a resolution of 1440 by 1600 per eye, the Aero has a resolution of 2880 by 2720 per eye at a refresh rate of 90 Hz. The center micro display is missing from the VR3 and XR3, but that's kind of okay here. Additionally, these panels are not typical LCD panels, which are known in virtual reality to have pretty bad contrast ratios. Now the actual headset specs. It's rocking a pretty ridiculous resolution. The visual experience and clarity is simply amazing, plus the Aero uses spherical lenses rather than the typical Fresnel style that we see on most headsets, which results in there being zero ghost rays. However, the field of view isn't anything special, and I'll preface this by saying that spherical lenses aren't as effective as Fresnel lenses when it comes to immersion. The built-in eye tracking is probably one of our favorite features of this headset. Not only does it provide some really cool utility, like gaze dots to show what you're really looking at in VR, 
but it also provides automatically adjusting IPD. You just throw the headset on anyone, and the arrow adjusts everything to that person and their eyes, even giving prompts to adjust the headset down or up for the best viewing. Never again do you have to manually adjust the headset to get the best possible experience. This is top of the line if you're willing to fork out the cash. We hope we were able to slim down the options for you guys on your VR headset hunting. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, check out one of our other videos.